What's happened in Possum Kingdom? I don't have a lot up top here. I just wanted to remind you that we're going to have a big listening party for episode 100 on January 2nd. Now, we're going to go live with our stream around 5 p.m. Central Time, and then we will start the episode around 7, 7.30. More details to come as we get closer, but go ahead and plan on being there on Saturday, January 2nd at 5 p.m. Central Time on our Discord. If you haven't been to one of our little live stream parties before, I urge you to come check it out. They're always a blast. We're going to do some fun giveaways we got some exciting things to talk about and just have fun. We're all jazzed that we we made it to episode 100. So I just wanted to remind you that that is coming up soon. I also wanted to just say happy holidays to all of you. And thank you for being a bright light in an otherwise dismal year. Um, hopefully 2021 will be better, but you know, I'm not holding my breath. In any case, thank you for being one of the best parts of this year. All right, that's all I got. I know you want to know what the hell is going on. <sighs> you know, grim dark. Here we go. So tune in because we're on episode ninety-eight. Oh, Captain, why, Captain? Welcome back to the premier Grim Dark Starfinder <laughs> podcast. <laughs> uh, we were talking uh, prior to push and record, you know, kind of in, in just our normal little pre show banter. We've been joking about this. We got called Grim Dark by, uh, by a review on Reddit. We all thought that was kind of funny because we don't really consider ourselves Grim Dark. But after last episode, I, I feel like we we can't joke about it's, it. It's, near well, as much. it's unironic now. You yeah, know? we spoke mm. it into reality. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so really, the, you need to blame the redditor who said that for last week's episode. Mm. Mm-hmm. That's really their fault. That's that my all take this on it. Happened to it. yeah. Well, I blame. blame I hope redditors that redditor listens things. and realizes that we saw their comment and it's like, holy shit! Yeah, I we're, mean, they, we're watching. They must listen if they know that we're grimdark. <laughs> they, I mean, That's true. Yeah. nothing about our yeah, nothing about our like marketing material suggests grimdark. You have to get in there to really, really get to the meat of it. Yeah, it's several episode, episodes in before it yeah, gets uh, just a few. Yeah, yeah. You know, episode ninety eight, y'all. Oh my gosh, I don't. I can't I don't believe know. it either. I don't know. I, I feel like uh, I just want to stop here. I, I'm not ready for it. I'm, I'm so cool. we just end the APA right here. Is this it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. I mean, no, just good job. Bad. Just you good lie job. in it. Good job. Not no, to beat a dead gonna... horse, but I mean, I've solved this shit a long time ago. Yeah, yeah I mean, but... that's true, Josh. I have to give it to you, man. Yeah. I mean, like, I, I'm much more inclined to just <laughs> give you that win now. I, <laughs> like, literally for the last three weeks, I've been, like, on the verge of throwing up. You know, just you know, I well, just you I don't know. Drinking you know? So much. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man! In yeah. this pandemic, you know, you do what you got to do. Uh, yeah, right. Um, I don't know. No, I mean, I'm ex- I'm excited for it. It's just you know, with last week's episode and and what's gonna you know what, the fallout of that. Tonight what happened? And, what happened last week? Um, you guys went to a farm uh-huh. and pet some goats yeah. and drank some surge. Some surge. Was, <laughs> yeah, surge. What, what is this? Nineteen ninety eight. Yeah. Hey, yeah. surge is still a thing, and I I buy it regularly. You would. <laughs> yeah, you would. Uh, I don't know. Look, uh, says the guy with the sh- cut off shirt sleeves and suspenders. <laughs> hey, man, it's out of here. It's out you of shut here. up. You look saucy. <laughs> 
Pop them spendies uh, for us one time, John. Yeah, let's get a let's all get right, a, all right. a, a, a suspendy twindy. Ooh, there you yeah, go. That's a suspendy twindy right there. There you go. I don't like it. Probably we probably better just call it a spendy twindy, right? Suspendy twindy is too long. Spendy twindy. You will say, you know, I don't really like to put terms. a label on it. You know. <laughs> <I don't> like- <laughs> I'm not really into labels. Uh, <laughs> Just into t- suspenders. Ugh. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I want to keep just get beating around the bush because I don't really want to get into it. <laughs> I don't really know how it's going to go. Uh, how, how are you doing, Zach? How was your day today? Was it good? Uh, yeah. Yeah. I'm solid, man. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me a story. Let's, uh, uh, let's do Fly Free or Die right now. Uh, no, absolutely not. Sorry, uh, can't can't help okay. you there. Well, all right. I I guess we'll 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 pick it up, and um, you know, shit shit really got grim dark last episode. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you might but, say that, yes. But for for, for real, sh- shit got weird. I mean, I, I I've been talking to a couple of you in be- in between episodes over the week. Just y'all been texting me and just i know it's been weighing on on a couple of you actually as 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 people and uh, i mean how how are you feeling about it right now i feel like phil did the right thing Mm -hmm. i agree with that assessment Mm. i mean you're you certainly resisted till till the very end there you know um which you know i really it I really didn't know which way you were going to go, Josh, if I'm being honest. Like, really? When I was, when I was prepping this, I, I just did, you know, I kind of figured how everybody else was going to react and what they were going to do. I mean, I kind of forced Zach into his situation and, um, I, you know, I had an idea of what Ziva was going to do. Really? Um, yeah, but, uh, <laughs> it's still, it's still kind of like, hit harder than i expected when when she, when she did it did it was that like that for you emily i mean so i have actually had i i haven't necessarily reached out to anybody because honestly i sort of wanted to wait until this episode mm-hmm. um but i i cried after we got off off air because I, I thought I had made like a huge mistake. Um, but after after I thought about it and everything, I was like, you know, you were you're playing your character the way she would react. Um, because everything that Ziva did, she had a very good reason for. Like mm-hmm. in her mind, she was 100 percent making Oren better. Like she's helping him to feel better, helping to relieve some of his his hate, his pain, and you know that's that's a a good thing. It's born out of a painful circumstance, but like the doctor was saying, you know she's familiar with that. You know, getting the mm-hmm. best out of a bad situation. So I'm gonna double down. <laughs> on my initial assessment and as much as it breaks my heart i i think that ziva would 100 percent that would have been her course of action hmm. just gonna double well, down like a chicken sandwich made with chicken bread yep <laughs> <laughs> well, Dude, gross. i'm ashamed I'll, to say that i tried one of those and I um, <laughs> and enjoyed it i'll be I, honest with you i was I mean, not disappointed it's chicken you guys man. should both be ashamed of yourselves no I I tried it. (laughs) I want to uh, piggyback on Emily's comment. Um, I also had trouble um, the day, I mean, like right after session as well. Uh, I had a lot of trouble sleeping. (laughs) And I was even wondering whether I did something wrong. You know, I mean, with the whole exchange that happened between the doctor and Kuiper, et cetera. And even then, even after that, I mean, trying to like me and Kuiper have two 
completely different thoughts on the matter. And like the thing is, is that it's it was hard to actually separate that at first. It was very mm-hmm. hard to figure that out. Like where I, I had to like put pen to paper just to address my thoughts and try to identify what the fuck is like. Where's the separation? Mm-hmm. Well, I think uh, I hope that you figured it out. Oh, you guys had choices, huh? That must be nice. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, novel concept. (laughs) Let's let's get into it and and see what the fallout from this is going to be. I mean, we we ended last week with the captain severing a strand of orange spirituality. Um, And when you do that, Ziva... The doctor turns to you and says, Yes, you have soothed your pilot and your friend. This was a wise choice and one step among many for you to achieve your nine truths. And then she turns to Mike and Kuiper and... She snaps her fingers and the restraints pop open and you are both able to get off of the beds if you want. Now, Aaron, the restraints pop off of you as well, but you are unconscious at this point. When she cut the the strand, you you just blacked out. Okay. Is... Is Oren still, like, he hasn't magically healed. Is his scalp no. still open? And his chest cage is if wide open, too. Once the doctor, you know, indicates that Ziva's done her portion, she would immediately try and start healing him, you know. Using what? Um, I mean, she has... Mystic Cure. I have three. Okay, so about that. Oh. You now are required to roll a will save against corruption anytime you want to use your Mystic Connection powers. Oh. Cool. Cool, 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 cool. Okay. So don't fuck it up. I'll do that. Wow, that's harsh. It's a little cocked. Can I roll again? <laughs> sure, sure, Emily. Okay, sure. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't fucking matter. I rolled a three. It's 12 three. total. All right. Uh, well... You are not able to cast Mystic Cure. However, you do progress a stage in Corruption, and you are now on stage four, and you have gained a new manifestation, but we'll get to that in a minute. I can't spend a resolve? Not here. Oh, fuck. Mike, Kuiper, what do you do? So, I mean, she unstraps us, and I can see, upon, like, getting up, I can see Aaron. Mm-hmm. I mean, you were able to see him the whole time, even though you were strapped down. You're just, like, you could just turn your head and see him, you know? You uh, heard him I mean, scream, you yeah. know? Yeah, I mean, as soon as those restraints come off, I mean, I gotta play Mike <laughs> like Mike. And he pops up and says, what the fuck did you do to him? I'll fucking kill you! And he's gonna charge at her. Uh, she just holds up a hand and stops you dead in your tracks. Yeah, and it's like a tall person holding a child's head. He's going to be swinging at her still. I don't care. Like, he would be lost to to rage from that. From seeing, actually seeing Zach, mm-hmm. or not Zach, Aaron with his like chest cavity open mm-hmm. and his head sawed off. Like, there is nothing you could do to calm him down in this moment, you know? Um... She said, well, in that case, she snaps her fingers and 
blackness for Mike, and he disappears out of the lab. That's leaving prob- probably for the best. <laughs> leaving the captain and Kuiper and a splayed Orin on the table with the doctor. What do you do, Kuiper? Mm. Mm. So Kuiper is almost almost away from this from where he's currently in. This is a time that's out of place, you know, and even in his mind almost is also out of place. But Kuiper is kind of coming I mean like as soon as the the locks disengage he kind of comes back to himself and he sees what happens with Mike just vanishes and an unbidden thought enters his head as he's like he's getting up and then he's just like a thought just intrudes and he pictures an old figure he respects saying the words to take one must first give and this gives him the courage to face what's about to happen and in that flash of realization he's going to look at Ziva lay back down and say do it the doctor looks at you Kuiper and says good you understand the value of pain you're a soldier you've been in war you understand that growth only comes from pain Captain Ziva please step over to Kuiper Mr. Vargas. Ziva, I mean, she j- Can you explain to me what happens to Ziva when she tries to cast the spell? Like, just- you just don't feel like your, your connection, because your connection was through Oren and Ibra, right? Yeah. You guys kind of mind melded together in that moment on Arellos, and you gained that power from your connection. Your mystic connection comes through Orin, and you just severed it. Okay. And you feel that, you know? And so you still feel that it's there, but it is so much harder for you to access. You know, and, and you think back to the time that you spent with Oren on Akaton, like learning this and the training that he, he gave you, and it just feels muddied and, and everything that you thought you knew about it just seems just out of grasp. Okay. Um, she would kind of like stare at her hands a little bit and then look at Kuiper and then look back at Oren. And she just say to the doctors, I, I, before I, I, I can't do anything until he's, he's healed. I, I can't heal him. Help, help me. Oh, he's fine. And she walks over and touches Oren's forehead. Blackness, he's gone. You'll find him in one piece. Don't worry. I'm worried. Uh, we can we can go once this is done of course and she would kind of slowly shuffle over you know Ziva's normally far from Emily she's a very graceful creature um, but she's just kind of slumped and just all right, Kuiper. Are you sure about this? And from the examination table, he looks at her 
and just smiles. It's all right. The scientist says to you, Ziva, says, one moment before you begin. Kuiper, Mr. Vargas. Yes. I'm proud of you. And she lays her hands on your chest and shadow kind of swirls around her kind of like almost in a tornado starting at her feet, moving up her legs around her waist, around her bust, and then down her arms. And the shadow goes into you. And she says, a gift. A token of goodwill. I don't mean you harm. I just mean to show you the beauty and the ecstasy of pain. Madam Ziva, you may proceed. So what exactly is she supposed to do? Oh yes, uh, I would like you to make an incision from groin to sternum. Um, the shadow, is it still like around Kuiper or is it inside him? Or Oh, it's inside him. Okay. Like phased into him. All right. Ziva would. Um, is he strapped down? No, he's okay. he's doing this of his own free will. Ziva would kind of like reach out with her right hand and just kind of like stroke his brow a little bit and would lean down um, and just kiss him right between the eyes. And then make the incision. As you're going to make your first cut, uh, the door to the lab burst open. And a gray-skinned woman with yellow eyes comes into the room. And behind her, you see a white-skinned bald man with red eyes. And... They're like running towards you and you, she shouts, no, she screams, no, stop. And the doctor turns and like all of her professionalism and all her like composure melts away instantly. And she turns with like utter anger and ferocity towards this, these intruders and says, she is mine, go. And at that, the whole scene disappears and you all wake up at the same time with a start on the epic tracer in your beds we're we're done with that section and so we need to talk about a little bit of mechanics and I think maybe that'll help us kind of shake the willies off here while we kind of talk mechanically is that what you call it Adam (laughs) (laughs) just shaking our willies shaking the willies off Shaking the wheelies off. Sometimes you just got to shake that wheelie, man. (laughs) Sometimes you just got to struggle off, you know? Oh, my God. (laughs) Uh, All right. All right. So, uh, (laughs) all right. Anyway, so what, what has happened here is that throughout that process, she kept talking about giving you a gift with, with no, um, like you could take a man of basically what that means is that you would get a manifestation without actually moving up the corruption track. Now we'll start with Emily Ziva. You are legit on now on stage four and you have gotten the painful clarity, uh, manifestation. So do you want to talk about what that is? Yeah. So, Painful clarity. Uh, As a reaction, when you fail a saving throw against a mind-affecting effect, you can use a weapon you're wielding to deal yourself four damage, subtract directly from your hit points. If you do so, you can re-roll the saving throw. This benefit has no effect if you reduce the damage you inflict on yourself by any amount. The stain. You thrive on pain, and thus you always have a number of self-inflicted wounds. 
Reduce your maximum hit points by a number equal to half your level. Oof. Yeah. Don't love it. Round it up or down? Probably down. That's typical, unless it says otherwise. Doesn't say otherwise. Yeah. Um, And Hero Lab should take care of that for you. It does. Uh, um, That's awesome. Right. And so just to point out, that is one way for you to activate your previous manifestation without having to go through all your stamina. So you can hurt yourself Mm -hmm. to get that advantage on rolls for a round using that, you know, so that's just something to consider. They, they, they work a little bit in tandem there. You get a fucked uh, up wombo combo. Right. I mean, right. That but is the name of the game. <laughs> Ziva is one stage away from being halfway to fully corrupted. Oh, um, Zach, you also don't really have a choice in this one. I um, suspect it as much. Right. Uh, because of, Ziva's surgery, uh, well, and because of Sedona and um, Evelyn's surgery, you now have the deadened emotions manifestation. Right. And you are on stage two of the corruption. Um, what that means flavor-wise, I'll let you say what the mechanics are in a second, but flavor-wise, you now have no feelings whatsoever about Evelyn or Sedona. Like, you have... Your your memories of them, but like any of your emotional memory, mm-hmm. gone. It's been mm-hmm. excised from you, you know? So that includes the mentor feelings that you had from Sedona. She is just a boss to you at this point. And Evelyn was a casualty of work. Like, not only do you not feel that love, you've forgotten it. Like, you you just don't have it in you anymore. It's gone. Um, you still have all of your mystical connection. The doctor did not lie to Ziva when she asked if it would separate you from Ibra. It did not. It separated her from you. Um, so talk to me about when I say her, the captain from you. Or, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So what does dead and emotions do mechanically? Uh, mechanically it gives you a plus two insight bonus to bluff checks. Mm-hmm. As well as a plus two insight bonus to saving throws against mind affecting effects. Mm-hmm. And if another creature attempts to read your mind and you succeed at the saving throw, you can render that creature shaken for one round as a reaction. Uh, you can do the same to a creature that fails a bluff diplomacy or intimidate check against you by directing your lifeless gaze at it. Mm. Um, and the stain is that. Uh, I reduce any morale bonus that I receive by one. Oh, wow. So you are disconnected from that's, your captain because now get him doesn't work for you. Right. Oof. Thanks. All right. Thanks, Adam. Appreciate it, man. You're, Appreciate you're it. This welcome. Is, this is really a lot of fun. We're I, welcome to Signal the Screams, finally. <laughs> Jeez. I will say, <laughs> unequivocally, Orin's is the worst. Like that is yeah not like the 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 overall concept behind his manifestation yeah it's mm-hmm. horrible mm-hmm. yeah it's brutal but you know in just a second Oren um I will you also now because you have such a clearer first hand experience with it mm-hmm. you know some more about the corruption and and how you can possibly battle it. Um, and we'll get to that in just a second. Josh, Fell basically made his choice here, right? Now, you had a choice uh-huh. to play along with the scientist, the doctor, and you were pretty clear in your choice that you did not want it. So I'm assuming you are n- not choosing to take the gift, right? That would make sense. You, yeah. You, you did. So what I need you to do is then roll against corruption. Okay. Ooh, that's a uh, will save. Be a 14. 14 is not going to get it. Um, I You can use a... I think I'm going to use resolve. Okay. So you stay at stage two. No change. You, you fought it hard. Um, and actually, I want to give you an inspiration. Oh. 
Sweet. Uh, but go ahead and draw it, and we'll come back to you on that. Heath, uh, the same kind of goes for you, right? You fought it pretty hard, um, and so I'm assuming you're not choosing to take a manifestation. I mean, I'm, I mean, I know you want it. I, well, I mean, I feel <laughs> like that. I don't even feel like in Mike's mind he was even presented an option. You know. Well, so like the think about it as playing along was the option, you know, and you didn't, you said, fuck that. And so you don't get a gift from her. However, you do still need to roll against the corruption. Okay. Uh, I think that's going to be a pass, my dude. That's a 26. Yeah, that'll get it. All right. Kuiper, you made the choice and she gave you a gift. So you get a gift without moving up the corruption path. Um, I think you're the only one who got the free gift here. Uh, and it's a good one. You got the shadow jaunt manifestation, which she showed you what it was, which is basically that teleportation. Why don't you go ahead and tell us uh, what it does? All right. So shadow jaunt, uh, the gift is... As a full action, you can teleport as if using a dimension door spell from one area of dim light or darkness to another, transporting only yourself and objects you wear or carry. If you are overburdened, this teleportation fails, but it's you can teleport up only up to 60 feet. And you can't teleport once again until it take a 10 minute rest. Which you, uh, which you regain stamina points. You can use this ability a number of times per day, equal to the number of manifestations you have. Which is now two. Yes. Okay. Uh, it's stain. Yeah. All right. You are apathetic and difficult to stir into action. When you roll your initiative check, roll twice and take the worst result. So literally a cat. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, Disadvantage okay. on initiative, basically for Jesus. for it, five years. Yeah. That we have. yeah. I that I don't like that. That's mm-hmm. that stain. Yeah, that's rough, especially for an operative, right? Right. Um. All right. So, Josh, let's go ahead and go to your um inspiration and Emily. I'm gonna give you an inspiration too. So go ahead and draw that. Well, Josh, you tell me what you got going on here. Oh, good Lord. <laughs> All right. This is from uh, Tristan, Bipolar Pop-Tart. Message, help. I fell for you and I don't want to get up. Winky emoji. Oh, wow. All right. Good. Well, that's that's. Good. I like it. <laughs> yeah, I like it too. All right, Emily. Okay. So, oh boy. This one is from Alex, my boy in Canada. Oh, God. The message. Spaceyelp.com review. One out of five stars. <laughs> My wife and I recently had the displeasure of visiting the so-called destination of desires. As if, to start, we arrived 30 minutes early and the lady at the front desk told me that our room isn't even ready yet. Even worse, the rose petals on the bed were not made of black tar heroin despite me specifically asking for that in my email (laughs) my wife ordered a salad for dinner and it arrived cold i tried to talk to three managers but i was told she's out saving the galaxy do yourself a favor and never go there i heard they chop your dick off (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> oh sweet jesus Alex. is really going downhill oh yeah. god i fucking love you so much you are just great oh uh, wow all right yeah one out of five i heard they chop your dick off <laughs> don't go there don't go there um, unless you're into that sort of thing I mean- <laughs> Um, all right. So that, that's what's happened with the corruptions and you all wake up, uh, on the ship and the ship comes out of this little shadow cloud as if nothing happened. And Terry says, uh, over the intercoms, Hey guys, we are about 
18 hours from Verses. Just thought you'd like to know. Fell Terry 2.0, out. <laughs> <laughs> I, my Terry. mic would immediately pop up and be like, Oren! And like run to his cabin or something. You know, like after what he just saw and then got mm -hmm. poofed out of whatever dream existence. <laughs> he wants to go check and make sure there's no holes in his boy. Yeah, I mean, for Oren's part, he would wake up like, you know, with a a, a deep <gasps> gasp and uh, like start feeling of his of his chest and his head, and then just kind of like put his hands on his head and kind of run run his hands through his hair, just kind of like uh, a little unsure of everything that just happened. Yeah, and then Mike bursts in. It's like. Are you all right, boyo? What the fuck was that, Mike? I don't know, but last I seen you, you had holes in you, and the top of your head was gone. So looks like uh. Wait, he had that's fucking holes in him? Not the case. His head was fight? gone. I well, F Fell joined us as well. Yeah, Fell runs. Yeah, into like the room. I ran into the room. Bridge. I'm sorry. <laughs> No, no. no. <laughs> didn't mean to interrupt then. My bad. No, Kuiper's <laughs> just going to run run over there too. Because, hey. But go ahead, keep talking. Yeah, I mean, like, I don't know what that was, but like, I don't know, man. Like, you, you look fine. Hey, yeah, I guess. Where's the captain? I don't know. Uh, let's let's find everybody, round everybody up, right? Yeah. So Orin will open a comms channel and just say, "Everybody on the bridge right now," and make his way to the bridge with Mike. Okay, you guys are on the bridge. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're on the bridge. Is everybody else on the bridge? Yeah, Fell's gonna go to the bridge. On the way there, though, he's gonna ask. Uh, hey, uh, hey, Terry, you mind uh, doing some checks and some, some weird shit just happened, man. I, I don't. It's, did you did you pick anything up on sensors or anything while like while we were sleeping? Uh, I, I, I did, did not. not. I, I can run a diagnostic, but I will say, as I watched all of you sleep, you were tossing and turning more than usual. Okay, I appreciate it, Terry. I love how like unfazed fell is by the yeah. creepiness of Terry. He's just like, cool, whatever. Him, yeah. dude. <laughs> like, I was looking down and he said, while I was watching you all sleep and I look up, I'm like, the fuck? <laughs> and so just like, what? Oh, okay. because, because he now has a body, now it's weird? <laughs> yeah, it's creepy now. Yeah. Well, it's like, where do you think that creepiness came from? <laughs> fair enough. <laughs> right, that's fair. Uh, yeah, uh, fell heads to the bridge. Yeah, but to answer your question, he, he does say that there was no anomalies, there was no nothing registered on any of the sensors or, or anything. That it was just a normal, you know, normal passage of time. On okay. the way there. Yeah, I mean, Kuiper, once, oh, I'm sorry. I was going to say, Kuiper comes in last, and he's just carrying a shot of Aguardiente. Looking a little bit more, I guess, relaxed. <laughs> <laughs> Apathetic. Uh, he's just chilling. Drunk. He's good. Yeah. <laughs> I'm yeah. going to flavor my apathy as being drunk all the time. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's just like, you know, he does come in last, but he wanted to get a shot in because that was still fucking heavy. You know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. And I mean, I think he walks in with a shot and like sees Mike like fumbling at his APA lighter trying to light a cigar, you know? And finally gets it and like takes a big drag of a cigar and then exhales heavily and just like so we need to talk what the fuck was that so Ziva hasn't hasn't arrived yet though right Ziva as she you know heard the comms coming on and you Oren called for everybody she's just kind of like sitting on her bed taking a deep breath, sort of like thinking over everything. And she would get up 
And on her way, before she heads out the door to the to the bridge to meet with everybody, um, she'd just be clenching her hands so, so tightly. And as the door opens, like, you can see, like, a small amount of blood just kind of trickle out of one of her palms from where her nails are digging into her hand. And she takes a deep breath and she walks to the bridge. So as soon as Ziva comes into the bridge, Oren will just look right to her, right in her eyes, and coolly and without emotion just says, You're walking a dark path, Captain. You are correct. I... And she'd just kind of look around at everybody. And then she'd look back at Oren. I'm sorry. But I was trying to help. I was trying to fix the broken part. It's not your place, Cap. is you're my responsibility I'm your captain I if I can fix you if I can mend you why would I not I'm sorry but I do not regret it or nods and um, just looks away from Ziva and towards Mike and says, You saw it too, huh? We were all there, right? And kind of glances towards everyone else, um, kept wanting to confirm that we all had like this shared experience, like that it was, in fact. Yeah, I, uh, I, I don't I have no idea what you're talking about with, with Ziva, though. I've I rushed the the scientists and then nothing. Hmm. Well, that I mean, I was hoping this was a, a just a, a dream or something, but apparently that weren't no dream. And like you said, Phil, you like poofed out of there. Well, what when they un unmanacled me? I did the same thing you did. I charged that fucking scientist lady and I got poofed out as well. And I mean, the last thing I seen was Oron with a big gaping fucking hole in his chest and his head. And he like can't say it, you know? Yeah. And, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Kuiper interjects just real quick and he just takes a quick. Uh, he t- he knocks back his aguardiente. Is what he means to say is your dome was off, and you were open from root, root to stem. Yeah, I was there, Kuiper. <laughs> so and helpful as always. You wanted to confirm what you saw. Yeah, yeah. well, I didn't fucking like it. I'll tell you that. I don't know what this is, alright? Look, you guys know I'm not some fucking mystic, uh, not even a particularly smart man, but it seems to me like maybe Ziva and my good friend Oren here have more inclinations about what this might be than I do. So maybe do me a favor and explain it like I'm five. Alright, uh... Adam, can I roll a mysticism to try to maybe, like, figure out what exactly was going on? Like, I mean, oren has got some yeah, knowledge yeah, of planes. Absolutely, and- yeah. You can Did roll Siva mysticism. assist with that? N- not, not on can a I- knowledge I check. Can you can do your own. own. You can do your own, yeah. I yeah. don't think I can even get a more 
Is that a morale bonus or is it an insight bonus on an assist on uh, an aid another? You can uh, get it, one point of but it, but it's a knowledge, so too, but. I can't aid you. But you can do your own, Emily. Could that be conveyed through a mind meld? Not between the two of them. Uh, will a thirty-two? Yeah, thirty-two is plenty, uh, and. You know, so you kind of take in everything that you've experienced, uh, including all the information you gathered at New Elysium, and then what happened in this shared experience. And I mean, you, as you've already known, you, you have shadow corruption, mm-hmm. and that you must have experienced some extra planar pocket to where. It was like a hybrid of a dream, hallucination, and actual experience, you know, because you woke up affected from it. Mm -hmm. And that whoever the scientist person was, was able to create a little tiny pocket dimension for you to have this shared experience. Beyond that, you know what's happened to you. Mm -hmm. You know that the mystical connection that your captain had once had with you is gone. You can feel it gone in yourself as well. Mm -hmm. Um, And you also now know more about how to battle the corruption. It's like being in so in this little pocket dimension of the shadow plane. You, you, just understand it more. And so I'm going to give you some mechanical information here that Oren now knows. Um, you can use remove affliction to suppress gifts and stains of any target's corruption for 10 minutes per caster level. Now you've done that already with Kane Zephal, yeah. right? Um, in addition, one casting of break enchantment or remove affliction can remove one manifestation but only if the victim meets the cure conditions of the corruption or, and this is the important part, hasn't accepted the gift associated with that manifestation. And what that means is you haven't actually activated the gift yet, right? So, the, but you have to make a save, you know, um, or a check using the remove affliction spell. Mm-hmm. And the DC is pretty high. Um, I'm just going to give you the DC. I don't know how this translates flavor wise, but so that, you know, with that 32, you kind of have a full gathering that's 15 plus three times the number of manifestations the target has. What's the role? Is it a mysticism? So I, it's whatever is in the text of remove affliction, remove affliction makes you do a role. I would think that it's probably a, a, a mysticism. Um, It's a caster check. Ah, all right. A D20 plus your caster level. Gotcha. So, the but this says that the DC equals four plus the DC of the affliction. Right, but this is a specific affliction here that has okay. overriding rules. So, so it's 15, 15 plus, plus three, three times, times the number of the... So I can only roll a 29 on this with a natural 20. My caster level is that, 9. Yeah, that's the tops of it, right? So uh-huh. it's 15 plus three times the number of manifestations the target has. And so what you can do is that you can... You can try to pull back some of the the manifestations anyways it doesn't cure the corruption sure n- yeah. nor does it move you back a stage in the corruption but you can pull a manifestation away which makes it easier to fight the corruption because the more manifestations you have the harder it is to fight the corruption now but you have to do it before the gift is activated the first time. Okay. Otherwise, and it's that, locked that's in. And that's to actually remove the manifestation. To suppress the effects yes. of the gifts and stains, is the DC the same, or is the DC the 
The DC is plus. the same. Yes. The DC is the same. Hmm. And if you're doing it to somebody like Ziva, we'll say, who's this far along, she's going to roll an opposed... She's going to roll a save against the spell to try to not get it because she's so far along. You know what I mean? So, like, you have to break through her will save or whatever. That's that's a pretty... Even if I'm willing? I mean... If you're willing, yes, but you have to ask yourself how willing you would be considering what you just did. You know what I mean? But that's that that's would always be a conversation that you would have to have in those moments. You know what I mean? And you have to make those decisions for your characters. But the reality is this is this is how you can deal with the corruption, but you know that the only way to actually cure yourselves of the corruption is to destroy the source of it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And you know that this scientist is the source of it. Okay. Well, that's a, a lot of information mm-hmm. for me to say in Oren's voice. Yeah, you can just relay <laughs> that to the... And, well, so, t- so, to be fair, uh, the question prompted by Mike was not so much about mechanics, but, like, he doesn't understand anything about the severing of bonds or ties or anything like that that just happens. He just knows what he saw was you, like, cut open and that Ziva did part of it and doesn't understand any of the, like, mentor mystical aspects of what the fuck is going on. Right. I think uh, Zach just wanted to have all the information before he answered that question. Right, right. Sure. No, I totally understand that. But I do think you, you know, now as Oren, you can respond to Mike in whatever way you want to. Hmm. Yeah, so, uh, Orin, well, gosh, how do I, how do I explain like Mike's five? (laughs) I mean, just hit the basics, baby, you know, like, I mean, tell him what happened. I mean, if it helps, I don't think Mike would necessarily even be aware fully that you, you and Ziva had some kind of weird mystical bond. Like, he knows Mm -hmm. you've got some kind of, like you know connection like emotionally but like in terms of like mystical powers like how would he know that and why would he care you know other than like heal me sometimes so like he he doesn't all he knows is that he popped into this dream thing that he thought was a dream when he woke up until you guys confirmed that you all experienced it as well you know and it Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, Mike is incredibly limited in what he could not only intuit, but actually know about what just happened. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. All right. So, Oren uh, just basically says that scientist. It's, it's shadow planar magic. But she went in there and cut out pieces of me pieces that I thought were important and then Ziva came along and severed a piece of the connection that I guess I was channeling into her through Ibra it's it's mystical mumbo jumbo Mike it's not going to be anything that is going to make much sense to you but I mean like what does that mean for you and for her, like, functionally as people? Like, I know you're a man of Ebra, and this is a world where gods are demonstrably real. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Truly. I don't she, know, Mike. What she, it means is that cut we you need off? to get... As no. far as I... Not from Ibra, not not Oren. Oren is still intact with Ibra. I would not sever that connection. That is not. That was never my intention. Cap. Stop. Just stop. And he turns back to Mike and says, uh, "What it means is that we need to get to Verses, and we need to talk to Kaon Race, and we need to find the source of this corruption." 
We need to end this. Look, mate. We're good friends. You don't get to fucking do that to me, right? Where you just say, like, that means we need to get to the next leg of the mission. What fucking connection got broken here? Like I said, Mike. Ziva was able to channel a piece of the connection that I have with Ibra. And it was giving her mystical abilities. We were training in between you know, the situation on Aurelius with the Aslanti and uh, cultivating her abilities. I don't know what it means for her. But yeah. There you go. But you're you're good? I'm a I'm as good as I can be, Mike. Alright. And Mike you know, visibly, like, is trying to process that for a second, you know? Because, like, he doesn't get any of this. He just, like, does... It does not click for him how any of this... At mystical stuff or magical stuff in general, not in his wheelhouse. Doesn't understand it. Accepts it as a reality. Doesn't have any inclination as to how it Yeah, works. it doesn't, like, yeah. comprehend the, the intricacies. Right. Fell's on the same page with Mike. Like, listening, right. but really not fully understanding and trying to I guess uh, find analogs in engineering and computers and how certain parts work together but it's just kind of coming up blank but Fell stays quiet So, but Mike looks over to Fell and is like well all that said all I know is what I saw and what I feel like I experienced which you said what, what question you said the shadow plane were we in the fucking shadow plane what where were we I believe so yes I think we were in some sort of pocket dimension of the shadow plane likely that scientist created but Terry said he didn't didn't see anything on any type of senses or anything like what fell this is a little beyond Terry's wheelhouse Huh. Yeah, br- brilliant of a creation as he is, there may be things he can't perceive, right? Just like there's things I can't perceive. And he and he kind of looks pointedly at Fell as he says that. He says, but I do know what I saw. And this scientist, she asked you, Fell, to come at me and do something like what happened with Oren. Yeah, I couldn't do it. I'm quite proud of you, mate. Because... That... I don't know how this all works, but thank you for not... Coming at me and digging into me, cutting me open, whatever it may be. Mike, uh, I'm very, I'm very proud of you. You've done too many things for me. For me to ever try to... Willfully harm you in any way, or, or, or do anything to you that I just... I don't understand. So yeah. and he, he claps you on the shoulder and then he turns to the captain. And he walks up to the captain, face to face, looks down at her, and says, Again, I don't pretend to understand how any of this works. But I know what I saw. And it looked like you willingly went digging into my friend Oren here and I hesitate to call you captain right now because if you ever fucking come at me with something like that pocket dimension or no when we get out of there I'll snap your fucking neck yeah so Oren actually interjects and he's like stop this is exactly what that stupid scientist wants She wants to turn us all against each other. To separate, divide, and conquer. That's how she's going to let this corruption spread. And Oren turns to Ziva and says, Cap, listen. I understand why you did what you did. It's done now. We cannot let this tear us apart. We're never going to get through this if we crumble. 
Does everyone understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Mike drops his cigar and stomps it out and walks away. Doesn't answer your question. So, Ziva was kind of like staring down after, you know, Mike had said his bit, and then Oren has just kind of come and laid everything out bare. She was sort of staring down, and she kind of pops her eyes up. She doesn't so much move her head, but her eyes turn up and look at everybody still in the room. You are right, Oren. We will kill this woman, this creature, whatever she is. And we will do it as a crew. We will do it with me as your captain. Because loath though you may be, some of you, and she would kind of glance down the hall towards where Mike walked out. What I did, I did for the best possible results. Oren is not burdened with this pain, this anguish that he has had. He is clearer. He can move forward. We will all move forward. And if anyone has any problem with it, or if they wish to snap any bones. I am happy to take that up with you. And she just kind of glares at everybody. Yeah, Fel's going to put his hand on the back of his head and just kind of rub it like sheepishly. It's like, yeah, uh, no, no problem here, Cap. And uh, it's going to turn to leave. She just kind of nod at you, not smiling, not saying anything. She'd look at Oren and just kind of nod a little bit, and she would walk across, um, heading towards, like, the galley. Or just nods a little bit and lets her go, you know. Kuiper's going to head towards the galley. For Oren's part, he'll take a seat in the pilot's chair and just spend a little time kind of watching the drift and and kind of being alone with his thoughts. Okay. Good. Uh, so, Oren, you can take an inspiration. Oh, thanks. Thanks, buddy. I'll, I will do that. Uh, let's see. I also got an Alex inspiration uh, okay. from our good buddy Alex. It says, To whom it may concern, I am pinning this letter in the hopes it reaches your gentle hands safely. I'm writing in hopes that you'll consider me as the new janitor to the Epic Tracer. My qualifications are as follows I am an expert in cleaning bodily fluids. I've never sneezed whilst using the bathroom, not even once. I only feel joy when I clean. I shit concentrated inspiration. On this last note, I promise all inspiration nuggets, as I call them, will be carefully stored and filed. I promise never to use the lizard's toothbrush again or try to charge my phone in the robot. I hope you consider my potential employment forever in your heart, Alex. Uh, I think that is a nice little nugget of levity in an otherwise really tough Grim dark episode. <laughs> um, but, yeah. So thank you, Alex, for that. Yes. Um, and Zach, good job with the role play there. Um, Heath, I'm getting to you, but let's go to the galley uh, as the captain walks in. Now, Kuiper, you're kind of trailing behind her, but what are you doing, Captain, when you walk into the galley? What's your intent there? Um, so she's actually kind of just leaning over what I imagine the space sink. Uh, just kind of like catching her breath like uh, but as she kind of like feels Kuiper come in she'd sort of spin around and lift her head just sort of composing herself I yes Kuiper how can I help you and Kuiper walks into the galley and he likes up a 
Don Juan Cigarillo. And it says, nice speech back there. I was hoping we could talk for a moment. Of course. What's on your mind? First off, I would like to apologize for my insistence on the actions that took place back there. He kind of gives a quick look. There's no need to apologize. I... I am happy to assist in whatever way assistance needs to be given. And in that moment, that was how I could have helped. But uh, I did not come to pass, so... <clears throat> yes. Did she just kind of smiled a little? And he takes that in, regards the captain, says... You've taken some hits from the crew, but I have a feeling they'll be all right. This is not over. It could have been worse. We could have all been killed. The opportunity was there. I see that you are struggling, as we all are. But, as you mentioned back there, and just to paraphrase, we must use critical thought. We must own our outcome. Those on that table back there all consented for one reason or another. To take, one must first give. Power does not come at a discount. She takes a deep breath and kind of walks over and puts a hand on Kuiper. I assume he's like sitting or, or, knee, or you know, leaned up against something as Kuiper is wont to do. Leaning, yeah. Um, and she just kind of put a hand on his shoulder and would say, You are very, very right. And... As much as it may pain some of the rest of the crew, I will use whatever advantage that I can get to ensure our safety and longevity. Mikael can be very passionate, but passion must be tempered by an even head. We will attend to our business on verses. We will destroy this creature and we will rid ourselves of this corruption and we will do so together and she kind of squeezes his arm and Kuiper kind of like slow nods in agreement and he puts his hand on top of where she's squeezing and he says I'd rather the hand of someone I can trust prodding at my brain than that doctor. <laughs> well, you have a very sharp intellect. It would take a, more than a scalpel, I imagine, to get at that brain of yours. And she would kind of wink and... I am glad you are here with us, Kuiper. I, um... I feel we will need you more than we know. Well, I like to keep things interesting. Add a little bit of spice to this food, if you know what I mean. <laughs> yes. Very much. Now, if, um... If you don't mind, I'm going to go and... Rest a little bit before we... Approach Versys proper. Of course, my Capitan. Excellent, excellent, excellent. A um, few hours later, Terry comes over the 
intercoms and says, we are approaching versus airspace. Sorry, star space, right? Not airspace. <laughs> <laughs> um, and you, you know, Oren, you're in the pilot's chair, and I imagine a couple of you might have made your way to the bridge as, as you've gotten closer. And you see Verses start to come into view. And Verses is a planet that is tidally locked, and so when you see it from out here in space, you see one half of it is just a sun drenched desert like the whole like half of the the globe is a desert and then the other half is completely shrouded in darkness with lots of ice caps towards the top and right down the equator line is this kind of always dusk lit ring of inhabitation of where you can see the lights of various cities shining and you know that with with great severity now that salvation begins with finding Kaon Reese at Verses specifically in Kuvakara and we'll see you. Whew. Well, we got through that one. I hope everybody else did too. Out there in, in the listeners' space. Yeah, yeah. yeah man. Ooh, it's, it's just like just juicy. <laughs> the, the premier grimdark Starfinder podcast. <laughs> premier. Set it up in the beginning. I wanted to live up to it. <laughs>